Welcome to a new episode, um, different environment. I'm at my mother's house in England, so it's a little different. And those of you that are watching the YouTube channel, if my face is red, it's because I've had my lip and chin waxed and my eyebrows done today. So just putting it out there, that's why. So today we're talking about the truth about self-sabotage and what you can actually do about it. So I know I do talk about self-sabotage quite a lot, but it can show up in many different ways in different people and it ultimately stops us from getting what we want, but it's it's also that's stopping us from getting what we want, right? So it's only us that can do something about it. So does this sound something that like something you would say? Um, I exercise this morning, so I deserve this pizza. Or I, I'm really stressed out and I'm upset and chocolate just makes me feel better. Or um, I can treat myself because it's the weekend and I've hardly eaten anything like all week. Like, are those statements something that you would find yourself saying? Because all the time that I've been coaching people to stop binge eating and to find their healthiest weight... They countlessly say, um, I'd be able to stop, I'd be able to reach my goals if I stopped self-sabotaging or if I had more motivation or I could just stop ending the positive results that I'm starting to get. And they're right because I'm going to help you understand why you might be self-sabotaging and then what you can do about it because um, self-sabotage actually isn't what you first think it is. I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. But are you a self-sabotager is the question. And if you're focused or motivated or whatever you want to call it for a little while, um, whilst you're going towards your goals, so whether that's weight loss goals or being healthier or just generally any goal in any context really, if you're like so motivated and driven at the beginning, then gradually you just revert back to your old ways. That's one sign of self-sabotage. Another sign is um, you know exactly what to do, but you just can't seem to do it. And we're in a world at the moment, which is amazing, it's ever expanding, that all the knowledge we have is out there. So if you type in God Google and ask anything, you're going to get an answer, whether that's the truth or not. And there's loads of things counterjects one another but whatever you whatever source you trust to get your information from the information is available so you know exactly what to do but you can't seem to stick to it you could even like write your own diet book about diets and healthy eating yet you just can't actually act on it so if that sounds like you that's a sign of self-sabotage and the truth is there's a massive difference between living um what you know like living a healthy lifestyle doing the fitness training doing the work to stop binge eating it's there's a difference actually doing that compared to just knowing about that so it's all about psychology and the habits that you have every single day that's where the success or lack of success comes from reaching or obtaining your goals. It's all about mindset. And I talk about mindset all the time, which is what I specialize in, but it's the most powerful thing. If you can learn how to control your own mind, you can literally do anything in this world. And I'll go into a little in a bit more detail. But the thing is, so if let's take diet and weight loss for example, because that's what a lot of people have goals to do is to lose weight. So if you if you eat food obviously and you're eating food in an excess so you gain weight whether that's binge eating whether that's just making unhealthy food choices whether it's not eating mindfully or whatever a diet whatever diet you put yourself on or don't put yourself on won't fix any um, mindless eating emotional eating binge eating habitual eating habits so you won't get to the root cause of why you're overeating in the first place if you go on a diet or if you're just thinking always about the food. It goes a lot deeper than this. So what humans like to do is con is look at their results and then think, oh, I don't like the results. I'm going to change my behavior to get a different result. Whereas that only works short term because 
what we ultimately then end up doing is because we've not addressed the root concern, which is the mindset, if you're just addressing your behaviours, it's not going to last. So we need to go right back, look at your mindset, look at what your thoughts and beliefs are. Your thoughts and beliefs then affect your feelings. Your feelings then affect your actions and your behaviours and then that ultimately affects your results. So we need to go a lot deeper than just looking at the food and the end goal and changing your behaviours. So I hope that makes sense. But self-sabotage can happen, right? This is almost like reverse psychology. Um, a lot of people think self-sabotage happens because they're scared of um, failure, failure which, is a, which is obviously an actual thing. But a lot of the time, self-sabotage happens when you're scared of success. So how weird does that sound? But why would you be scared of success, right? I can see yourself asking. But if you're successful, any number of your fears could be realised. For instance... If you have food as a temporary um, escape, for whether it's at home or at work or you use food to like cover up your emotions, then if you didn't, if you no longer stopped, if you no longer continued to do that and gave up the food that you eat, like when you're not hungry because you're covering up emotions, then you'll have to then deal with with uncomfortable feelings such as self-doubt, self -doubt, doubt, regret, disappointment, fear, because you're not suppressing, oh my goodness, I can't speak today, sorry. You're not su suppressing these emotions with food. So that's one um, fear if you became successful with regards to, again, I'm going to use the, the weight loss and the getting healthy habit. That's one fear that could come about if you achieved your goals. So maybe when you say, you know, maybe once I lose the weight, I'll finally do X, Y, and Z, or once I lose the weight, I'll do this, that, and the other, or I'll go for the job, or I'll do whatever. So that safety blanket that protects you from actually taking action to reach your ultimate goal of a different career or moving countries or whatever, it's an intimidating prospect, even though it would be ultimately rewarding, it's intimidating. If you no longer had this weight that you was carrying then you need to actually follow up on the things you're saying when I lose the weight I will do this so they're really psychological roadblocks but nothing that can't be overcome so you can overcome this guy so to break the pattern of self-sabotage you need to get to the root of why you're self-sabotaging yourself and again I'm going back to the root cause with as with everything there's always a reason why people do something, no matter what it is. So the self-sabotage worksheet I like to use with my clients, and that's um, it helps gain clarity as to where you may be self-sabotaging in your life so we can work on our goals, which ultimately will make our lives better, which will make us happier, which is the whole point in life, right? So let's I'll, I'll break down how you actually go about doing this and I really would advise you to follow along and actually pause me and then do the things that I'm going to suggest that you do in the following conversation because sometimes you might get a like an aha moment where you're like oh my god like I didn't realize that was stopping me from achieving my goals so let's go so number one is to list five reasons you believe your life will be worse off when you achieve your goal. So what I mean by that is, here are some real reasons that I've I've got from clients from me asking them this question. So number one could be, I don't feel like it's possible. Um, what's the point in trying because I always fail? So ultimately, I don't want to just keep failing again because it's like really embarrassing and it's like really, it's it has a big effect on how I feel about myself. So that could be one. Another reason, well, my boyfriend loves chocolate and pizza and so do I and I want to indulge every weekend with him because I just love to do that and I don't want to have to worry about carbs, calories, fats and trying to eat healthy. That could be another one. Or I'm scared of dating because when I lose the weight, I'll have to get myself out there. So that could be, if I've lost the weight, then I'm going to actually have to do what ultimately I'm scared of doing. Or another one, 
I'm worried that I'll never be able to eat my favourite foods again, which, and I'll always feel deprived, which is a biggie and this is so real and I'll talk about that in a minute or another one could be I don't want to exercise every day so those are the some reasons that people have said would be into re- be put into reality if they achieve their goals so that's how their life would be worse off if they achieve their goals but the reasons all have one thing in common our powerful subconscious mind believes that rationalizing ourselves out of weight loss or healthy habits will protect us but once we identify the real reasons that are actually holding us back and blocking us we can then begin to counteract them and start to make a plan to overcome them so excuse me number 2 is challenge your fear so number 1 hopefully you've already written a list of at least 5 things that would be worse off if you reach your goals or what you think will be worse off if you reach your goals. Okay, that's number one. Number two is challenging your fears. So question your reasons and then like poke holes in them to remove their logic so then you can then remove their power. So let's take one of the examples I used. Um, I don't feel like it's possible. So what's the point in trying? I don't want to keep failing over and over again and just feel shit when I fail all the time, okay? So... Is, so so we need to um, challenge this thought. So is it really possible that you've that nothing works long term? Is that really the truth for you or are you just telling yourself that? I mean, most likely you've seen people um, around you, me, myself, that's the same word, other people around you that have managed to stop binge eating, that have accomplished their weight loss and health goals and they're just as capable as you are. So perhaps what you've tried before wasn't sustainable or, you know, if we want to lose weight or get a fitness goal or any kind of goal with regards to that type of area, first of all, other people have done it and then we just need to find a way that works for us, okay? So when you're saying there's no point in ever trying, well, there is, you just need to just not give up and find something that works for you. So the other example I gave was my boyfriend loves chocolate and pizza and so do I and I never want to stop having that at the weekends with him. Okay, so challenging this, you can still have an enjoyable weekend without eating all the chocolate pizza and ice cream. There's, there is a difference, this is really important, between living for today and living for tomorrow because One solution that really helps me, or helped me, and I still ask myself these questions time and time again. So before you're about to start eating your mindless eating in front of the TV with your boyfriend, which you do enjoy, fair enough, ask yourself these, ask yourself these few really powerful questions. So will doing this behavior get me further away from my goal or closer to my goal? So just stop and ask yourself that question. And then you give yourself the answer. So, for example, if I want to eat pizza, chocolate and ice cream, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But will it bring me further away from my goal if my goal is to be healthy and to lose weight? So, yes, it will take me further away from my goal, not closer to my goal. So that's the first question. And then the question number two. So will this pizza, chocolate and ice cream fill in the blank? Is this pizza more important to me to eat this now than it is to reach my ultimate goal in the future so it's about choosing between what you want now and what you want most so you've got to stop and ask yourself that what you want now against what you want most and if you want to eat the pizza more than reaching your goal Because you you will still get there, by the way. I'm not saying just because you have bloody pizza one night at the weekend and chocolate and ice cream, you're not going to reach your goal. But every action and every choice you make is a vote to who you want to become. So if you're voting more often than not to be going further away from your goals, then ultimately you're not going to reach your goals. And then I think if that keeps happening, you need to reassess your goals because you obviously don't want it enough because we can't have everything. If you if you sat there and you're like, you know what, I really do want this pizza, chocolate and ice cream and it's more important to me to have this evening with my boyfriend than it is to go one step closer towards my goals, then great, enjoy it, but then don't 
sit there afterwards and feel guilty and bad about what you've eaten because you want to reach your health goals because you always have a choice, always. And once you take responsibility for your actions and realise that, okay, so I, I ultimately have a choice, then make sure you own your choice. And so it's just stopping and asking that question. And by the way, you can have, I didn't think you could, but you can because I'm living proof, you can have a nice evening in and eat pizza and ice cream and chocolate, but why don't you start off by having half the portions that you'd normally have. So instead of having a whole pizza, I was having half. Instead of having a whole tub of Ben & Jerry's, I would have half a tub. Instead of having two bars of family size chocolate, I'd have one. And then the more you start generating new habits and breaking your habits that you've just gotten into, the easier it is to then keep working towards your goals. So there's a lot more, well, if you're a binge eater, there's a lot more emotional reasons behind why you're binge eat. It, it's such an ingrained habit, you need to rewire your brain. So I do, I do offer specific binge eating coaching, but just as a general rule of self-sabotage, ask yourself, is it going to get me closer to my goal or further away from your goal? And then make a conscious decision based on what your answer at the time is. So that's one. Um, the other one I said was someone saying, I'm scared of dating, so then when I lose weight, I'll have no excuse, I'll have to get myself out there. So then you need to break this down and say, well, what I, what am I actually like scared of? Is, is it the possibility of being rejected? Is it the possibility that my relationship might go the same as my last one went, which was not good at all? Like, are you scared to be vulnerable? Think about this stuff and be as specific as specific as possible to really get to the root cause of why you could be self-sabotaging. So another one that I used above with regards to what would your life be worse, how would your life be worse off if you achieved your goals, would is one saying, I'm worried that I'll be deprived and I would be able to eat my favourite foods again. So any programme or anything you follow, I mean, I, you know me, if you followed me for a while, I do not recommend following a meal plan or any diet at all. But if you decide to follow a programme and it demands that you give up your favourite foods, then that's ridiculous because deprivation is just not sustainable. And that's actually where you can teach yourself to binge eat. Dieting causes like nearly almost every single case of binge eating, bulimia and things like that because it's the whole starvation and then your starvation cycle, and then your body's just going to fight, fight, fight against you, then you end up binging, and then there's a whole lot that goes into that. But So if anything's saying cut out food groups, cut out this, cut out that, it's not sustainable. You can enjoy your, fa- you can enjoy your favourite foods whilst losing weight and reaching your, ho- reaching your health goals. I teach my clients how to be fit and happy, not fit and miserable. And that's the truth because life's all about being happy, not just an ultimate goal where if you hate the process to get there, you're not going to get there anyway. And then when you've got there, you're going to self-sabotage because you've not enjoyed the process. So it's all about what you're thinking as well and your habits and the way you look at things and how enjoyable you make things. So if you enjoy, if you don't enjoy your life, if you're losing weight, you'll never be able to sustain that weight loss long term. So that's one thing. And the last one I said that could be make your life worse off if you reach your goals, if your goal is weight loss and health, is someone saying, I don't want to exercise for hours a day. Well, you don't have to because 80% of weight loss and general health comes from your diet. Um, So it's not, we don't exercise just to lose weight. And if you do, you should really should look at the way you think and feel about exercise because exercise makes you feel good it makes you feel strong it makes you strong it's just so good for your health it has nothing really to do with weight loss it just runs alongside weight loss so when when you've got your head around the fact that if you're thinking oh if I want to be this fit and healthy person I'm gonna have to spend hours in the gym no you don't you can just do a couple of hours a week whatever suits your lifestyle and you'll feel so much better so it's challenging your beliefs about how your life would be worse off if you achieved your goals it's challenging those beliefs and then number three is list five reasons your life would be better once you achieved your goal 
So here's a few examples I've got for my clients. So I'll be a lot healthier and I'll reduce my chance of getting any um, related weight diseases or diabetics or something like that. My life won't be full of just binge eating and binge eating thoughts and guilt and negative cycles. That's a massive positive from if you're a binge eater especially. Um, I'll have more energy for myself and my family. I'll feel happy in photos. I'll feel comfortable in my clothes. I'll be a good role model for my children so then they won't copy me and then uh, um, acquire my negative food behaviours. And I'll finally stop worrying about my weight and just consuming my thoughts all the time. So they're very powerful when you you've list so number one you've listed the reasons why your life would be worse off if you reached your goals number two you challenged those beliefs and came up with a positive to counteract that and number three you wrote a list at least five things at least why your life would be better if you achieved your goals and it's getting your head around it and working out why you keep self-sabotaging i mean it really is all in your mind. Like until we identify and deal with the real reasons that we self-sabotage, we'll never be successful. So a lack of knowledge about what's good for you and what's not is rarely a problem. Like I say, you can go on Google and get anything. But what we do lack is consistency and effort and accountability, which is why it's so important to get an accountability partner um, hire a coach, get help, like join something that holds you accountable and helps you to be consistent. And also as a coach, for example, I can give you extra knowledge and tools that will help you work towards your goals that you might not have known before. But the main thing is you can get anything you want off Google. It's putting that time, energy, money and attention towards yourself and then having a plan, working alongside a professional to get you towards your goal. So that really, really, really does work. My last episode I did was called Why Change is So Fucking Hard and What We Can Do About It. Because change isn't easy, guys. That's why like 98% of the population never really get what they want because they don't want to go through the pain barrier of the change. So check that episode out if you've not um, listened to it or watched it or read it yet. And if you need me, I'm here for you as always. And I hope you've done those few powerful exercises to break down maybe why you're self-sabotaging. If you would like to share the reasons that you self-sabotage, please comment below or message me. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, you can have, be and do anything you want. You've just got to go out there and get it. I love you all and I'll see you next time.